Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to North Carolina. I'm here with Kyle and Tristan. You guys got quite the operation, man. And thanks for the sense of water. Yes, sir. No problem. So, Kyle, you've been on the show before, but you called in, and now I'm here at your shop, and uh, this place is massive. you got all kind of trucks. What do you got, like 25, 30 employees? We're sitting on 27 right now, and then I think we've got, last time I counted, it was 18 trucks leave out every day. Wow. Get your uh, mic a little bit closer. There you go. So you are going to be the next Ronaldo playing D1 college uh, soccer in <laughs> North Carolina. I don't know about Ronaldo. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if it was a girl or an injury or something happened, and you, you changed course a little bit, started a landscaping business. So back in 2005 when I graduated high school, I was ranked number one soccer player in the state of North Carolina. Um, I signed to play soccer at East Carolina University. Uh, a week before I graduated high school, they canceled their men's soccer program. I was left with nowhere to go. What high school did you play at? <clears throat> Southern Nash. Okay. Home of Julius Peppers. Oh, yeah. So, um, went there. Went, uh, I was left with nowhere to go. My, it was actually my football coach I kicked for. He was like, hey, there's a small little school up the street up there. Why don't you just go up there and play and we actually played in two national championship junior college national championships lost both by a goal my first national championship i played goalie our goalie got thrown out it was the shortest goal you could ever see <laughs> in a national championship game yeah. but i probably got 40 division one offers from playing goalie and so then the next year i went and i played um i actually played forward scored two goals tied up the game in a national championship game we lost in a shootout so, and then I uh, got an offer to play at NC State and I lasted a month and a half. I got a, uh, had an injury and I had a girl that was kind of persuading me it's time to grow up and not chase that dream anymore. And, you know, I've always been doing the landscaping thing since I was 12, 13 years old. But <clears throat> when you lose your scholarship, you get kicked out of student housing pretty much. So I was left my parents, you know, I didn't come from, you know, I come from a good home, but I didn't. My parents didn't have a lot to help me get rent. So Tristan, um, he was like, "Hey, come live with me, and we'll make it work. Pay me whatever your whatever your uh, scholarship, student loan money gives you." Yeah. So that's what I did, and then I worked in a mulch yard, and I slowly started doing side hustle jobs, and then probably 2010. I, I was awarded my first commercial contract. It was a $5,500 a month contract. So, it was, I mean, for a 21-year-old kid, that's pretty good. Yeah. And then, you know, we're billing out in monthly maintenance. We're billing out a little over 100 k a month. Wow. And then our, that doesn't include our install. Install, we're probably close to 100 k as well a month, try to be. So, I mean, we're on a massive job, I think. Last time me and you talked. Yeah, you were telling me it was like a $4 million job or something crazy like we're that. We're still on that job. The construction manager, I guess he had no experience at all. He built the apartments completely backwards. Oh, so man. The, <laughs> yeah. So the town is making them go back and rebuild everything. Are Pretty, you serious? Yeah. Yeah, I was talking to the <laughs> owner the other day, and he was like, man, it sucks. You spend $9 million building an apartment complex, $10 million, whatever it is. And he's like, now I've got $7 million worth of renovations, and I haven't even leased my first apartment yet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's a huge property, too. Yeah, it's massive. Yeah, so did you guys already put the sod and plants and pine we've, straw and all that in? We've got uh, got a lot of it in. <laughs> we've got the last four buildings that they built backwards that we're just waiting on right now. Okay. So hopefully that'll happen in the next 30 to 40 days, we're hoping. Okay. And then uh, I brought Tristan on. So after I started my own thing, Tristan came on, and he was running some construction for me. Just He was in between deployments, had some time off. He helped me out. You uh, were in Iraq? Yeah, 2009 to 2010. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for your service. Yes, sir, absolutely. And then he came back and um, – Worked for me for a little while, and then he got a really good job doing contract work. And I, you know, he was like, I really don't want to leave, but, you know, they're offering me a lot of money. I got to go. And yeah. I said, I understand. Once a lifetime opportunity, I couldn't pass it up. So he traveled the world for probably the next four to five years. And then I, um, he called me. He's like, hey, I'm done. I've, I've saw some of your posts on Instagram and stuff. I'd like to come back. And 
And it was just me running pretty much all this mm -hmm. by myself. I have my dad. He comes in in the morning, checks the oil, stuff like that, and the mowers, the trucks. And I was like, yeah, I need an account manager. So now, since Tristan's been here for almost a year, we've added another account manager. We actually have an office manager now. Yep. And then I'm out selling left and right. Yeah. What's your day-to-day uh, -day look like, Tristan? Day-to-day, -day, going to audit properties, make sure all the guys are doing what they're supposed to do, check in with the property managers, see if they want anything extra, try to upsell more service, and uh, I'll bring the quotes back to Kyle. He'll write it up, get in contact with them. Um, just basically uh, keeping that liaison, that relationship between while we're there at property with the property managers and our crews. That way there's nothing lost in translation. Yeah. Um, it's basic foreman type stuff with, as far as the crews go. I mean, each crew's got their own foreman that okay. drives along, but human so, error, we're so not always going to see everything. Most so. of these, uh, the 100,000 average monthly um, maintenance, that's commercial properties? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We don't have any... Uh, we got two residential properties, and that's because they're the owners of our commercial properties. Okay. Um, one, we do a, a Lewisburg College. We do their their grounds and maintenance. Um, that's actually where I played soccer at. So, okay. You know, they, they, they're they the ones that gave me my first contract, but we'll do the president's house, and then we have a church where we'll do the preacher's house next door. Okay. Um, But I try not to get into residential. Uh, I've, I've dabbled in it before, and it's just not my cup of tea. You know, I, I like to say, you know, Tristan's like a brother to me, so I like to say we're family-owned and operated. You know, my yeah. my wife's there, I'm there, my dad's there. Um, you, My daughters, mm -hmm. uh, they're getting to the age where they want to come to work with dad every day. I mean, my little redhead, she could probably operate a lot more better than 90% of my guys. <laughs> probably better than me. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking off air. You guys were asking me. I'll throw the question back to you. <laughs> Uh, everyone else is wondering the same thing. How do you get good help uh, with everything going on in our culture? It just seems like uh, getting somebody to want to go outside and work for eight, nine, ten hours a day and actually show up on time and do quality work. Well, where do you find those guys? You don't. Um, we got. <laughs> no, you I, don't. I, they I normally the, reach out to us, to be honest. Yeah. The twenty, the 27 guys that we average, we've got, I'm going to say, about 14 or 15 that we can count on. Um That'll be there no matter what. If I called them right now and said, hey, we got a tree down, yeah. they're going to show up. They're going to show out. And, you know, I've tr I try, like some of my guys, they have kids now that are 18, 19 years old. And I try to say, hey, why don't you bring them in the summer? Let them get a feel for this. So then as they're moving along, they can start working, doing the same thing. And, I mean, you know, the, the labor rate has just gone through the roof. I remember when you could have somebody come run a weed eater for seven fifty an hour. Yeah. And you don't see that no more. Mm -hmm. how have you seen the bidding wars with these commercial properties is are because it seems like a lot of times there's not too much loyalty with the commercial properties it's like who can get me the uh, lowest price what do you guys find when you're bidding or, or do they give you the um, renewals or is it, is it a war what, what's going on to keep the work i'll say 98 percent of our customers stay with us for three or four years or more most of ours have been with us for five years or more um we build good our, all of our regional managers, we have great relationships with them. So yep. if they move on someplace else, they always bring us. We got a lady. She gave she gave me an opportunity, gave me six apartment complexes about 12 years ago. And she's moved on, you know, just as the world goes on. And she's moved on, and she's now at a new company here in Raleigh. And she's buying – they're buying properties left and right. And in the last month, she's added four more properties on to us. So it's – so we just built – and that's what Tristan's here for. He's kind of there to – to make make them feel comfortable, you know, they still call me, but they know to call Tristan. Yeah, Tristan makes them feel comfortable. Uh, you know, we we just put Jobber into effect about thirty days ago. Um, so my office manager she emails me and Kristen the task sheet every day mm -hmm. for the guys. Um, I haven't got everybody iPads yet. I was just kind of working out the kinks of Jobber. So we print it out, give it to the guys. We print it English and Spanish. Um, and then at the end of the day, at the next morning, actually, they have to turn in the previous sheet of what all they got done to Tristan. And if they yeah. don't, you know, then Tristan, I guess there's disciplinary yeah. actions. Time to pay the piper. <laughs> it is what it is. Got to yeah. hold people accountable. 
it's uh as far as as far as the crews go, the good help is that we try to keep morale high. So we know what's hot outside. I'll put a cooler in the back of my truck. If I'm out of the property, I'll stop by. Hey, guys, come get some Gatorades, come get some waters, stuff like that. So just trying to keep the morale excuse me, morale high. It comes back tenfold as far as what those guys are willing to do for work. Uh trick I learned in the military. You you got your people happy, they're gonna give you results. Yeah. When they start getting unhappy, that's when you start having issues. But luckily we haven't had too much of a problem with that. Especially weather like it is today. Storm Yeah, we had a hurricane or just tropical storm or what? Tropical storm Elsa. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is normally we'll get about two or three of these a year. Um, okay. All that sod we laid is very, very good for that today. Uh, yeah. Because in the flowers, you know, uh, it seemed like flowers are hit and miss on these commercial properties. You go to put them in and either get too much rain and they get a fungus and die or it gets blistering hot like it did this year and we got no rain. So we're having to, me and Tristan are out in water trucks, you know, tanks in the back of our trucks with water, watering as quick as we can go. Uh, still trying. I mean, we still got properties that flowers are dying on because managers won't help us water. Well, I want to hear more about pricing. That's uh, one of the most frequently asked questions we get. How do you put in these bids, make sure it's profitable, and, uh, you know, keep the business going? So uh, we're going to hear from today's show sponsors. And uh, coming up, I'd love for you to tell us more about your business and specifically what you've learned over the years on how to price these jobs at the accurate price. Mm -hmm. We'll be back with Kyle and Tristan. All right, guys, we're back here from rainy North Carolina with Tristan and Kyle. We get asked all the time about pricing. How, how do you price a job? And uh, you're doing commercial work, so I'm assuming these co contracts are probably a year long. So how, how do you put it together with if they want lawn mowing, they want pine straw, you mentioned they want flowers, maybe mulch, uh, plants. I mean, there's so many variables. How, how do you put in the bid so that you cover all your overhead pay your salary and, and the business is, is uh, profitable. So typically what I do, I'll go on, I'll go online now with technology the way it is. We can go online and get a measurement of the turf and uh, mulch is kind of a hard thing. I, I don't include mulch in any of my contracts. I don't include the flowers in any of my contracts. That's all separate. Um, and then I just take up my labor rate. I include a supervisor, depending on the size of the property. I include a supervisor uh, and two to three laborers. And then I attack on from my, me and Tristan being out there. Um, and then, you know, flowers, we get twice a year, fall and spring. And then mulch, they'll typically do one time a year in the spring, fall, whatever, whatever's in the schedule. Um, aerating and seeding, fescue lawns, I hate fescue. So I try not, <laughs> I try to just get everybody on Bermuda. Bermuda is one of the easiest and toughest grasses there is. So I try to get everybody on that because it's easy to maintain. And is this like a transition zone? Because down in Georgia, all we got is Bermuda and Zoysia. We we don't even do fescue down there, really. A lot of people got. I say a lot. Most people go fescue here if they don't want the green. If they if they want it green year round. Mm -hmm. Um, but here the heat kind of blisters that fescue. Yeah. I, I try not to do. You know, if I get somebody to call me and say, "Hey, I want to do a sod job. I want fescue." I and in the middle of summer, I tell them no because I don't want to warranty it or anything like that. I've just learned over the years to try to keep Bermuda going. Zoysia is another big grass that's up and coming. Uh, one reason I like Bermuda, about f two minutes down the street, there's a huge Bermuda farm right here. So oh, my cool. guys can go pick it all up first thing in the morning and roll on to the job if, if, if we need to. Um, but back to the pricing, you know, I'm depending on – the size of the property is the price I go. Um, I try to get two-year deals out of everybody with uh, option to renew at the end of the first year for another two years to try to keep my pricing competitive. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of people I found out, they'll flip to that back page and say, oh, well, Kyle's $1,000 higher, but they're not seeing what they're getting. They're not reading everything. So I, I do a lot of following up with my managers, my regional managers, just saying, hey, what can I, what can I bring to the table to help you out? You know, and that's, um, you know, Lamont, Lamont uh, Hairston. Yeah, I've tried, you know, I've tried teaching, telling him that stuff. Hey, hey just ask him what, what you can do to get to get their business. Keep asking that. Keep mm -hmm. asking that question. I, I've, got, I've got several properties that have stuff in Greensboro. Lamont said, oh, that's too far for me to go right now. So that's what we, um, 
mulch, I mean, we're probably about $70 a yard spread and install. That's a, that's a little bit on the cheap end, but, I mean, we do it. We do probably, I bet we do 10,000 yards of mulch a year. Wow. And, I mean, it's so we're buying bulk and we're buying directly from the mulch supplier, not a third, per, not a third yeah. party. So we're getting, most of the time I get mulch and pine straw delivered out here in my to my land. Yeah, and this is, I'm going to try to shoot a video, you guys, um, of this property. It seems like the rain kind of stopped a little bit, but you have, how many acres is this place? I've got a little, right at nine acres out here. I've got probably five that is cleared. Um, I was in North Raleigh. I was over by the State Farmer's Market, and I was paying close to $6,000 a month in rent, a little over wow. 6000 And my wife was telling me, Kyle, we're just, we're just throwing that money away each month, so we found this land, took out a mortgage, and we're paying not even a quarter of that. I mean, we're paying yeah, close so to that. And it's nine acres. There's a house that looks like you've renovated it into an office, basically. Yes, sir. And then you have three shops. It was raining so hard, I kind of dashed in here fast. But you you have different buildings with the equipment in it out there? Yeah, my bobcat, my excavator, pretty much stay on job sites. Okay. Um, it pretty much, because I hate moving those things, so... If, so if they're there, they're gonna be there for the long haul. Like my bobcat's on the big job, my excavator's on a um, on a. Uh, we just got into doing swimming pools. Uh, okay. The hardscapes around the swimming pools. So my excavator's sitting on a pool job right now. So we're just we'll move them. As, I'll come pick them up on my truck, and we'll I'll move them to the guys for them, uh, or my dad if he doesn't have nothing to do, he'll come and pick them up and move them to the job site for the guys. And then all your uh, skag mowers, power equipment. Where do you keep all that stuff? I've got a, I've got a probably fourteen hundred square foot, and it's slam pack of skag. Okay, I'd love to get some footage of that. Yeah, well, uh, I think we've got, I've got two that are in the shop, but I think I've got five or six uh, of the uh, stand on machines, and then I've got a couple of cheetahs, and I've got a, and then I do, um, I got some steel in there. I dabbled, I left Echo about a year and a half ago um to dabble in steel to see what it was about i've noticed that steel stuff is uh and people are probably gonna shoot me for saying this it looks cheap now a lot of like your articulating hedge trimmers uh the gear boxes are almost like this plastic resin versus they used to be metal um so i got went back to echo i i probably spend 15 to sixteen thousand dollars on echo every year you get the ninety ten blowers yet? I haven't. Okay. I've just kept. I, I'm a. I'm seven seven O's. You still got yeah, those rocking those. Seven, you seven. can't kill those things. No, no. My guys tear the things up, man. I, matter of fact, they I, tried to kill it. <laughs> a matter of fact, I had a guy run one over with the truck. He forgot he put it underneath the landscape body truck. He ran it over, and that daggone thing still cranks up and works oh, better than ever. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Echo's one of the uh, sponsors of this tour, giving me opportunity to come out here and hear you guys' stories. Awesome. So uh, it's cool to hear that, uh, you know, you're finding quality, you know, th their products are quality. Yeah. yeah. I Definitely. mean, st steel makes a good chainsaw, um, but I, I'm, when I find something I like, I stick to it. You know, I, I started off with x machines, mm -hmm. uh, and actually I've got an x at my house that has 6,700 hours on the original motor. Wow, I got a little bit of oil that leaks out of it every every week. Um, I just use it to cut the grass in my house. That's it. But I went to Xmark. Xmark got expensive. I've tried John Deere. I've just found that Skag for the money and for the guys working them every day. Skag is where it's at. There you go. And so, uh, what's your routine in the morning? I know you said on your other episode you get here at like four thirty-five in the morning. What time do the guys?